diodes work in an electronic circuit, much like spring-loaded check valves work in plumbing systems. These semiconductor devices allow the flow of current when adequate voltage is applied and block the flow in the opposite direction. Diodes have two terminals, the anode and cathode, that are connected by modified silicon materials and housed in an outer casing. Pure silicon is not a good conductor, so to use it within a diode, it must be doped by adding other materials. Doping creates either an N-type, negatively charged, or P-type, positively charged region, depending on the material that is added. Let's break this down to the atomic level. Silicon atoms each have four electrons in their valence shell, but they desire eight valence electrons. To achieve the desired amount, they share with the atoms around them. This is referred to as covalent bonding. Now imagine a grouping of silicon atoms, all sharing their valence electrons. If we split those into two regions and dope one half with a material such as phosphorus, we create an N-type material. This means we're replacing some of the silicon atoms with a material that has more than four electrons. Because the silicon atoms only need eight total, and phosphorus has a total of five valence electrons, each phosphorus atom provides one extra electron that is free to move about, causing the material to be negatively charged. For the anode, the region is doped with a material such as boron. Boron atoms have fewer than four valence electrons, resulting in valence holes, creating a p-type material. These two sections meet to form a p-n junction, where some of the free electrons are attracted to the holes in the p-type material, leaving holes in the n-type material and resulting in a depletion region. The net electrical charge in this region creates an electrical field that prevents other electrons from moving across the junction to fill additional holes. The potential difference created in this region, often called forward voltage, in typical diodes is 0.7 volts. Now if we connect a voltage source in forward bias, negative going to the cathode and positive going to the anode, voltage will be allowed to pass through the diode. However, the source voltage must exceed 0.7 volts or it will not be able to pass through the depletion region. If a diode is connected in reverse bias, meaning the negative lead of the power source is hooked to the anode and p-type material, while the positive is connected to the cathode and n-type material, it works as a sort of protection device, allowing only a tiny amount of current to flow. The holes in the p-type material are attracted to a negative charge, while electrons are attracted to a positive charge. This pulls on them and expands the depletion region, which increases the electrical field. The diode will continue blocking the passage of large amounts of current in reverse bias unless the reverse breakdown voltage level is met. This is the maximum voltage the diode can resist before it stops acting as an insulator and begins to freely conduct current without damage. Now that you know a little more about how diodes work, visit digikey.com to search the wide selection of diodes to be incorporated into your next design. Want to watch more videos like this? Like and subscribe!